Good morning Year 8 and welcome to today's maths lesson. Let's start off with a quick starter shall we? Can you simplify 6 twentieths? Can you simplify the ratio 6 to 20? And can you then increase 145 by 10%? Please pause the video for a couple of minutes and answer these questions in your light blue books. OK, to simplify a fraction we need to divide the top and bottom numbers by the same number. So if I divide 6 by 2 and the denominator 20 by 2, what's that going to give me, James Cork? 3 tenths. Lovely. To simplify a ratio, we do a very similar procedure. We need to divide both sides of my ratio by 2, which will leave me with 3 to 10. And finally, a little bit of percentages. I want to increase 145 by 10%. My first question, Emily, what is 10% of 145? 14.5, lovely, we've just divided it by 10. Let's look at my question. It says I need to increase 145 by 10%, so I need to take my original 145, add on, my 10%, which was 14.5, which will give me what, Joseph? 159.5. Lovely, thanks very much. A little recap for you. When we're simplifying ratios, we need to put them into their simplest form with the same units and no decimals. So if I've got the ratio 9 to 12, what number goes into both 9 and 12, Misha? 3. Great. So I can divide both sides of my ratio by 3, which will leave me with 3 to 4. So here's my question, Year 8. What do we call these types of fractions, 7 over 21 and 1 third? Therefore, what do you think we call these types of ratios? There's a special word for it, and it begins with E. Can anyone tell me what it might be? Violet, what do you reckon it is? Equivalent ratio is perfect. We call these types of fractions equivalent fractions, and we call these types of ratios equivalent ratios in exactly the same way. In your dark blue books, Year 8, can you write me the title Equivalent Ratios? And underneath, can you write the sentence, Equivalent ratios are found by multiplying or dividing both sides of the ratio by the same number. Pause the video for a couple of minutes and write that in your dark blue books now. OK, I'm going to go through a couple of examples and then you're going to do some examples in your dark blue books. So pens down, eyes on me for a minute. I've asked... Are 2 to 3 and 8 to 12, those ratios, are they equivalent? Let's work it out. Can I multiply both 2 and 3 by the same number to give me 8 and 12? Well, 2 times 4 will give me 8, and 3 times 4 will give me 12. I've multiplied both numbers by the same number, 4, so yes, those two ratios are equivalent. How about 4 to 8 and 1 to 2? How have I gone from 4 to 1, Demi? I've divided by 4, lovely. How have I gone from 8 to 2, Misha? I've also divided by 4. So here, I've divided both numbers by the same number, in this case 4. So yes, those two ratios are equivalent. Over to you, Year 8, in your dark blue books, are 4 to 3 and 16 to 12 equivalent, and are 9 to 27 and 3 to 9 equivalent? Pause the video and have a go at those questions now, please. OK, let's work them out. 4 times what gave me 16, Xander? 4 times 4, excellent. 3 times what gives me 12 times in? 4, excellent. So I've multiplied both sides of my ratio by 4, so yes, they're equivalent. How about the second one? How have I gone from 9 to 3, James Gooden? I've divided by 3, lovely. A 
And Janus, how have I gone from 27 to 9? I've also divided by 3, so we've divided both sides by the same number, so yes, they're equivalent. Let's move on to a slightly trickier example. Pens down and eyes on the board for me. I've now got 8 to 12 and 12 to 18, and I've been asked, are they equivalent? Now we know we're going to have to multiply 8 by some kind of decimal number to get 12, and 12 by some kind of decimal number to get 18. However, I can take a slightly different route. If I write 8 to 12, and I want to somehow make 8 into 12, if I divide 8 by 2, that will give me 4. Whatever I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. 4 to 6. How can I get from 4 to 12? Well, I can multiply 4 by 3. And I can do the same on the other side, which gives me 18. So it's taken two steps this time, but if I divide both sides by the same number and then multiply both sides by the same number, I get the second ratio. So yes, those are equivalent. Over to you, Year 8, in your dark blue books, can you come up with a two-step way of proving that 5, 15, 5 to 15 and 2 to 6 might be equivalent? Pause the video and in your dark blue books, have a go at that question now, please. OK, Year 8, I'm going to go through the answer for you. And here we go. I've started off with 5 to 15. I want to somehow make that 5 into a 2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 5, which will leave me with 1 to 3. And then I can multiply my 1 by 2, which gives me 2. And I can multiply my 3 by 2, which gives me 6. So by multiplying and dividing by whole numbers each time, I've proved that 5 to 15 and 2 to 6 are in fact equivalent. Over to you, Year 8. In your dark, no, in your light blue book, sorry, can you pause the video for 10 to 15 minutes and can you tell me, are each of these ratios equivalent? Some of them are going to require two steps, some of them are going to require one, but can you manipulate both numbers within the ratio by multiplying and dividing by the same number and get the second ratio to prove they are equivalent or not equivalent? Pause the video for 10 minutes and work those out now, please. And these are the answers. Please check how you did. OK, let's do a diagnostic multiple choice question. Joe and Paul are arguing about equivalent ratios. Joe says 4 to 14 is equivalent to 1 to 3.5. Paul says 4 to 14 is equivalent to 6 to 21. Who's correct? Pause the video and have a quick go at that question in your light blue books now. Right, let's go through it. So Joe reckons 4 to 14 is equivalent to 1 to 3.5. To go from 4 to 1, she's just divided by 4. Has she done the same on the other side? Let's find out. 14 divided by 4 does give me 3.5. So yes, those are equivalent. I agree with you, Joe. The second one, Paul says 4 to 14 is equivalent to 6 to 21. I want to turn this 4 into a 6. It's going to help me out if I divide it by 2 and do it in two steps this time. So 4 to 14 is equivalent to 2 to 7. Then I can multiply both sides by 3. Which leaves me with 6 to 21. So yes, I agree with Paul and I think the answer is C. Pause the video for a minute and in your light blue books have a think about this question for me, Year 8. OK, let's go through it. So Tom says that 4 to 10 is equivalent to 6 to 15. I want to make this 4 into a 6. How can I do that? 
Let's start by dividing by 2, which leaves me with 2, 2, 5. Then I can multiply both sides by 3, just like so, which gives me 6 to 15. So are they equivalent, Lily Mae? Yes, those two are equivalent. Ooh, how about the next one? I've got 4 to 10. I want to make that 4 into a 5. So I'm going to divide it by 4. Whatever I do to one side, I've got to do the same to the other. And then I'm going to multiply it by 5. However, this time I'm going to end up with 5 to 12.5. And that's not the same as 5 to 11. So I think Katie's wrong and that's not equivalent. So I think the answer is A. Only Tom is right. OK, Year 8, can you pause the video for a minute and how many words can you think of that start with the letters U, N, I? Pause the video, have a think in your light blue books now. OK, you might have thought of unicorn and unicycle. There's loads of other words you could have come up with, university, uniform. So what do we think unitary means? The prefix uni means one and it is an important prefix in the English language. For instance, the prefix uni gives rise to the words unicycle, as we had above, uniform, unison, or perhaps the easiest way to remember that uni means one is through the word unicorn, or the mythical horse that only has one horn. So unitary means one. In your dark blue books, Year 8, can you give me the title unitary ratio? And underneath, can you write the sentence, this is when one side of the ratio is... What do you reckon the missing word might be, Tamsin? Is one or a single unit? Pause the video and write this in your dark blue books now. OK, previously I told you that ratios had to contain whole numbers. However, in the case of a unitary ratio, we have to make sure one side of our ratio is one, therefore the other side may contain a decimal or a fraction. This is the only time you're going to see this. So my first question, convert 3 to 48 to the form 1 to n. How have I gone from 3 to 1, James Cork? I've divided by 3, excellent. I need to do the same to the other side to work out what my value of n might be. I divide 48 by 3. 48 divided by 3 gives me what, Theo? Fantastic. 48 divided by 3 will give me 16. So converting 3 to 48 to the form 1 to n gives me 1 to 16. Let's have a go at the next one. We've got 3 to 49. In the same way, I'm going to convert the 3 to a 1 by dividing by 3. This time I'm going to end up with a decimal because 49 does not divide exactly by 3. 49 divided by 3 gives me 16.3 recurring. So there you have it. I've converted these ratios into a unitary ratio where one side of the ratio is 1. In your dark blue books, can you pause the video and have a go at these two questions for me now, Year 8? OK, let's look at some answers. So we're trying to convert these into ratios that look like the form 1 to n. So we need one side of the ratio to be 1. I've divided 4 by 4 to get 1. I need to do the same to the other side. 48 divided by 4 gives me what, Xander? 12. Lovely. Let's do the same for the second one. Again, this one's going to give me a decimal answer. 49 divided by 4 gives me 12.25. And I've converted those two ratios into the unitary ratio where one side is 1 and the other side is my number n. In this case, my number n was 12 and 12.25. 
In your light blue books, Year 8, can you please pause the video for 10 minutes and convert these ratios into the form 1 to n, the unitary ratio, making one side of the ratio 1. Pause the video for 10 minutes and answer those questions now, please. And here are the answers. Please check your work and see how you did. Quick diagnostic question for you. 2 to 5 is equivalent to 1 to what? Pause the video. Is it A, is it B, is it C or is it D? OK, let's work it out. To go from 2 to 1, I've divided by 2. I need to do the same to the other side. 5 divided by 2 is going to give me 2.5. You could have also come up with 5 over 2. Either of those would be correct. 4 to 3 is equivalent to 1 to what? Pause the video in your light blue books. Is it A, is it B, is it C or is it D? OK, let's work it out. We've done 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. I need to do the same to the other side. 3 divided by 4 will give me 3 quarters, and the answer I was looking for is B. What do we call this kind of ratio, Tamsin? A unitary ratio. Every time you see a ratio with a 1 on one side, that's a unitary ratio. Let's use our unitary ratios. So in your dark blue books, can you give me the title using the unitary ratio? and then pens down, I'll go through an example, and then you're going to do an example. My example says that in a recipe for five people, I need 100 grams of egg. So my ratio looks like five to 100 grams. And I've been asked, how much egg or how much ingredients do I need for seven people? I'm gonna start by finding my unitary ratio by dividing both sides by five. This tells me that for one person, I need 20 grams of egg. I've been asked to find it for seven people, so I multiply both sides by seven, which tells me that for seven people, I need 140 grams of egg. Over to you, Year 8. In your dark blue books, can you have a go at this question now, please? Pause the video and answer. And here's the answer I was looking for. 10 people requires 100 grams of egg, so one person requires 10 grams of egg, so seven people require 70 grams of egg. Here's my unitary ratio in the middle. Okay, you're right. I'm gonna go through an example, then you've got an example, so pens down while I go through this one. I said that for five people I need 100 grams of egg. How much do I need for seven people? We worked that out to be 70 just a minute ago. I'm now going to apply the same principle to three more sets of ingredients. So if I've got 50 grams of pork for five people, that means that for one person, I'm going to need 10 grams of pork, which tells me that for seven people, I'm going to need 70 grams of pork. On to the sugar. We said that for five people we needed 10 grams of sugar. So for one person, I need how much sugar, Violet? Two grams, excellent. So how much do I need for seven people, Luca? 14 grams, lovely. And finally, carrots. I've started with five people need 20 grams. How much do I need for one person, Vicky? For one person, I'm going to need four grams. And Ollie, how much am I going to need for seven people? Exactly, seven people are going to require 28 grams. Over to you, Year 8. In your dark blue books, can you have a look at this recipe? for 10 people and tell me how much of each ingredient I need for 7 people. Pause the video and have a go at that question now, please. And here's your answer. Please check that you got them right and make sure you've got this example in your dark blue books for me. Okay, you're eight. Light blue books out. 
And can you have a go at these questions for me? So for the, each question, I've given you a recipe for five people for question one, and I've asked how much of each ingredient will you need for eight people? So you need to convert it into the unitary ratio and then multiply it up for eight. For the second one, I've given you a recipe for six people and I've asked how much you need for eight. For the third one, I've given you a recipe for seven people and I've asked how much do you need for eight people? And then 14 and 14 for questions four and five. Can you work out how much of each ingredient you're going to need for 28 people and 21 people? Pause the video for 10 minutes and answer those questions now, please. And these are your answers. Please check how you did. And that's the end of today's lesson, Year 8. Can you now head over to Google Classroom and complete my exit ticket? Thanks for listening and have a great day.